Hi, I'm Andy with EcoCha and here we are with batch number 44 of the EcoCha Tea Club. And this month's batch is an Ali Shan Late Spring Oolong Tea from the Taiha area of Meishan Township in Jai County. Elevation of about uh, 1,100 meters. And the harvest was on, I think, May 14th, if I'm remembering correctly now. Uh, somewhere around uh, mid-May. And uh, so it's definitely later than uh, pretty much anything else in that area. They were already harvesting uh, tea up at the highest elevations of Lishan uh, this year around the mid-May uh, point. And um, so we found out about this batch of tea from our mentor, Lisa Lin, who uh, has been sourcing tea from this farmer that we introduced to her uh, a few years ago. And she's been buying batches of spring tea from him uh, because they've been consistently uh, bug bitten. Uh, this batch, Lisa bought because she had a hunch. It wasn't very obvious by uh, the flavor of the unroasted tea when she first tasted it, whether it was significantly bug bitten or it had a significant uh, bug bitten character to it or not. I uh, happened to stop by and have a pot of tea and uh, I thought of this farmer and asked Lisa if she had sourced any tea from him this year. And she said, oh yes, in fact, just recently and uh, pulled out the bag of tea, brewed it up for me, and it immediately impressed me. I thought it was very nice tasting tea, very floral, uh, balanced character to it. Um, really a nice spring tea. Um, and with this hint of honey character in the aftertaste. So long story short, I went home the next day, called the farmer, he still had some, one bag left, uh, and uh, I went back to Lisa's the following day just to taste it again and was convinced on the second tasting that I wanted to share this batch of tea with our tea club and here we are. Um, so this, this farmer, uh, especially his brother, his older brother has a smaller plot, an older plot of tea. He's gone completely natural for several years now. Uh, but they're, they tend to be less consistent so we just have to see what he has available on a seasonal basis. The younger brother, uh, Lisa, has been impressed every spring. Uh, I think this is the fourth now, third or fourth year in a row, of her buying significant quantities of tea from this guy. Yeah, there's definitely more. <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's like fresh scones, honey scones. Sweet balanced, soothing aroma coming off the very first brew. Uh, so when we went out to pick up this batch of tea uh, to be shared with the tea club several weeks ago, uh, Lisa finally was able to go come for the ride. She had yet to meet this farmer, only talking with him over the phone and uh, receiving samples from him by mail and purchasing tea from him. So uh, we were happy to finally connect them in person. And uh, the guy is just uh, modest, humble, a little bit shy. He, I noticed he was much more uh, talkative in his local dialect with Lisa in comparison to with me, uh, where we speak Mandarin. So that was nice to see. He kind of warmed up and uh, got a little bit local. <laughs> and I could see his personality a little bit more when he was uh, communicating with Lisa but super friendly guy. Um, his family also produces uh, various uh, vegetables for uh, sale and this season it happened to be tomatoes. He brought us a large box of tomatoes before he allowed us to leave his factory. So um, it's a really nice area. It's, it's an, a remote village, farming village, uh, on the way to Ali Shan, on the northern edge of what would be, uh, or for what is considered the Ali Shan tea growing region in Meishan uh, Township, and uh, very secluded. The, uh, the the photos show in our blog post that this is, uh, you know, it's pristine country out there. Let's have a taste.
Definitely characteristic of a high mountain spring tea as well, high mountain oolong from Taiwan. Uh, fresh green uh, aromatic qualities. Definitely floral in the nose. Uh, smooth, uh, nice smooth texture on the palate. And it's something about that viscosity with a, just a certain note of flavor in there that hints the bug bitten effect. We'll tell you a little secret. Lisa uh, has started to roast her stock of this tea. And we were there, uh, we again happened to just stop by while it was in the oven and it smelled amazing at about five hours in of the first roast. And so uh, we're guessing that the, the roasting effect will bring out that bug bitten character. And uh, we may just be inspired to share this same batch of tea uh, in its roasted version. We'll see when Lisa is done with it. And if she um, is nice enough to share it with us, we'll have to see. That was a joke. Basically, Lisa shares any tea that she has with us as long as she has it. Uh, and that's been how it has been for 25 years. Much respect. So there it is. Uh, Alisan Late Spring High Mountain Oolong Tea from Taiho region, 1,100 meters. I went, by the way, I did 10 grams of tea in a 150 uh, cc pot. Uh, and I'm just winging it in about one minute brews. Um, so, and it could go more if you really want to get the full uh, capacity of it, uh, go a little bit stronger than the 1 to 15 tea leaf to water ratio. Do 11 uh, grams to 150 or, uh, you know, do the math and see what works for you. Mm. So much going on here. Fresh vegetables, garden fresh, some floral notes, and some fresh baked sweet pastry notes. It's really a nice aroma. We'll just have one last sip while it's cooled down here a bit. Yeah, as it continues to brew, the thicker character comes out nice smooth on the palate. The leaves are mature. Uh, one aspect of providing a little bit more constituents in the actual leaves that provide a more substantial brew. Please let us know what you think about our batch number 44, July 2019 by adding comments to our blog posts uh, or our YouTube channel. Please share the video and uh, if you haven't already, please uh, sign up for our newsletter and our YouTube, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and let other people know about it so that they can learn from our explorations here at the Eco Cha Tea Club. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you next month.